Have you ever wanted to convert video files to animated GIF images? And perhaps you are already doing that. And I know there are so many tools available out there. Some are free, some are commercially available. But wouldn't it be cool if you could create your very own using open source? And you could also include it in your portfolio of projects. And so if that sounds like fun, let's dive in. All right, and so this is the animated GIF maker created using Streamlit in Python. And so before showing you how to build one, let me show you how it actually works. And so you could go to animated-gif.streamlit.app and then you're gonna see this animated GIF maker Streamlit app. So on the left-hand side here, you're gonna have the side panel where you could upload the file. So here we have an example file. So if you right click on it and then save link as, and then we're gonna save it into our computer. And now we have it here in our computer. And then we could just drag and drop it here. And then the file will be uploaded to the server. And then instantaneously, you're going to see that the following metrics are loaded. And it is based on the movie file or video file that we've just uploaded. So let me click on it locally. And this is the video. So you can see that it is 29 seconds in length. And if you play it, it looks like this. Okay, it was from one of the tutorial. So let me close it. And instead of having it as a video file, we will be able to convert it into an animated GIF file. So here you can see that it is mentioned that it is 29 seconds and the width and height is here. 1234 pixels, 912 pixels high, and there's a total of 1746 frames at a rate of 20 frames per second. And let's have a look here in the preview. You can see the show image, click on it, and then you're gonna see the image at the particular time point. So it is showing you a preview of the video file at the 29th second. And if you move it here, like here, 12, it will be at the 12th second or at the beginning of the video. All right, and so here's the image parameters, the file name, Streamlit App Starter Kit screencast.mov. This is the image size, the video resolution scaling here. If you scroll down, you're gonna be able to set the parameters of the image. So these parameters on the left-hand side are depicted here. So you have the video resolution scaling is right here. You have the playback speed, it is here. The export duration, kind of like how big of a duration that you wanna export from your original video file. So if you want to export everything, then you keep it from zero until total number of seconds. However, if you want to export only a smaller duration, you could say like you want to import from 20 until or 21 until 26, and then you're going to export a smaller file of about five seconds. Okay, let's do this. Let's export for the first five seconds, or how about here? From seconds number 12 until the 19th second, and then we're going to keep the frames per second at 20, and then the playback speed, crank it up to about eight. And then when you're ready, you could click on the generate animated GIF. Click on it and then wait for a while. And then you're going to see the preview of the animated GIF file, which is here. Okay, so you see that it'll loop infinitely and then you could download the image. It is about 3.8 megabytes in size. Okay, so you could play around with the parameters and if you would like to export the entire video, you could just do it like that. And as you see, it will allow you to export again. To generate the file again but if you want to export the entire file it might take a longer time so let's do it generate animated gif so this will take quite some time so you could just grab a cup of coffee and by the time you get your coffee it'll be finished all right and this is preview and 20 megabytes in size and you could click on download image all right, this is the GIF file. You can see that it's comprised of all of the frames here. So there's a total of 211 frames. And let me show you. If I go to medium, and then let's say that I want to write a blog, and then I could and drop it here. There you go. So the animated GIF file is inside the Medium article and all of this for free and it's built in pure Python with a front end using Streamlit. All right, and so this is the 
app that we're going to build today. And so let me show you the underlying code. So the links to the animated GIF app will be provided in the video description. And so this is the code. It is provided here in the Data Professor GitHub and in the animated GIF repo. So this is the Streamlit app file. Let me show you the contents of the other files here. So we have the Streamlit app. We have the requirements. Let's have a look at the requirements file. So here we are using four libraries. We're using Streamlit for the web app. We're using MoviePie for the conversion of the video into the animated GIF. We're using Image.io and also the Image.io FFmpeg for the video processing. Let's see the packages. Nothing here. The example is the movie file that we provide here in the download example file it's right here in the example directory and the dot streamlet will be the template for the config.toml, which will allow you to configure the colors. All right, so this is the readme and you could also click here to go to the animated GIF app. Let's have a look at the streamlet app.py. So here you can see that it is 139 lines of code. So let me zoom in and let me show you both side by side. So I might have to zoom out for here to 100%. All right, I think we're good to go now. So you're going to see that the first eight lines here, we're going to import all of the necessary libraries. So here we're using Streamlit as the web app framework. We're using OS for the operating system task. Let me see, what are we using it for? All right, we're using here the path and then we use base 64 for the encoding temp file for generating of the temporary file to display the image in the app we're using the image method from the PIL library in order to generate the array of images from the video files we're using numpy and to make the conversion from the video into the animated gif we're using the movie pie and as we are allowing you to manipulate the image parameters here, we're also embedding the resulting parameters into the session state so that whenever we manipulate the file parameters here, it will be reflected in the session state. Otherwise, the app will be reloaded again and again. So these span the duration of lines number 10 until 20th. And so all of the parameters here are reflected here. So we have the width, the height, the duration, the frames per second and also the total frames and at default we're specifying zero and upon specifying the number of values here it will be updated okay so from scratch it will be assigned a value of zero and upon loading up of the parameters here it will be replacing the session state of the respective parameters all right, in line number 22, we're going to specify and write out the title of the app, which is here with the balloon emoji animated GIF maker. And here are the upload file for the side panel. So we're specifying here st.sidebar.header upload file right here, upload file using the header. And then for uploading the file, the file uploader, we're using the st.sidebar so that it goes to the sidebar and then we're using the file uploader function. And then as input parameter, we're specifying it to use choose a file, which is right here. And then we're letting it know to expect the following movie files, which are the MOV and the MP4. So in order to specify additional video formats, you could add to the list here. And this is the example file. So we're using Markdown to do that. So we specify here, download example file as displayed here in the text and then the link to the video file. And then on line number 31, we're specifying Made With Love by Chanin Nantasinamat, AKA The Daily Professor. Okay, and so let's have a look here. Lines 34 until, it's gonna be long, until 135 is going to be the entire logic of the app. So lines 34, actually number 35, because 34 is the comments. So from line 35 until 134, it will be activated if the uploaded file is not none. So upon uploading the file, the if statement here will be activated. However, by default, there is no file. Therefore, it will display the warning or in the yellow box because st.warning will display the yellow box. And it says with the left 
pointing emoji upload a video file as you see when you upload or you load up the website for the first time let me open it up in another session here right when you upload it when you loaded the website for the first time it will display here or the else statement on lines 138 139 however upon uploading the file it will change to the if statement and all of these will be executed or it will be run and so let's have a look at what it would do 3738 it will create a temporary file using the uploaded file it will read it in and then from the temporary file it will paste the name of the temporary file into the clip variable and then from there we're going to specify or update the value of the clip duration into the session state right using clip dot duration and then we assign it to the session state variable which will update the ones defined earlier with the value of zero right here clip duration it will replace it here okay and so slowly it will replace the other session state variables as well as we go along line 45 input widgets st.sidebar.header input parameters which is right here input parameters the resolution scaling slider which is right here and then we have scaling a video resolution from 0 until 1.00 which is here and then the default value of 0 0.5 is displayed right here right so if you want to change this value you could do so and it could be 0 0.2 or 0 0.4 whichever arbitrary value that you like but I just set it at the middle here. And the playback speed is set here from 0 0.1 until 10. And the default value is 5.0 because earlier on we changed it to 8. Okay, so it reloaded. And let me upload the file again. All right. The speed, playback speed, as mentioned already. And we have the export range, which is right here. Duration range to export specified here as input argument here and then the default is zero here specify here and then we make it into an integer and then we use the clip duration which is 29 and then the same thing zero to 29 so we specify zero we specify 29 and then here is the range between zero to 29 which is displayed here zero to 29 so for this part if you make it zero to let's say 10 it will show only zero until 10 like this like okay so if it's zero 10 here if this is zero and then this is 10 it will be like this okay but because we let it to be clip duration it will select the entire clip duration all right and so line number 52 we have resize selected resolution scaling which is right here selected resolution scaling and we specify 0 0.5 so it will be half the size of the original file and then we assign it to the clip variable and then from there, we're going to do the various processing. We're going to take the clip here. We're going to determine the width and the height and the duration and the frames per second in order to get the total frames, right? And then we're going to specify the frames per second to use for the exports. And then all of these will be updated to the session state variables as defined earlier on here from 11 to 20. Okay, it will be updated from the ones from 54 to 58. All right, and so line number 60 until 67 is going to be the metrics that are displayed here. So we're using a total of five columns, which is spanning here, one, two, three, four, five columns. And then we display the metrics using here, define columns one through five using the st.columns method. And then we use co1.metric and then we have the starting from the width as the input argument and then we have the session state variable for the clip width and then we follow it by the pixels right here and then we do the same thing for the height the duration the frames per second and the total frames and then this is what we have five columns for the metrics under the st.subheader metrics right here and then in order to show the preview we use st.subheader and then we specify preview and then to show the expander box here which when we click it will allow us to select a time frame which is right here select the time frame preview a time frame and then you could select a particular number number 11 will show from the duration at 11 second okay 
and clip.save frame. We're going to save the image preview here as a frame.gif file. And then we're going to use the image.open in order to display it here using the st.image. Let's have a look further. Print image parameters. Let me minimize it here. Right here, image parameters. And this is the expander box for it. And if you expand it, you're going to see the parameters. So all of the parameters will be written using st.write. And then we're using here the file name, the image size, the scaling. So we're just simply displaying out the parameters in the expander box here. And then finally, we have the generate GIF, line number 89 and number 90. Number 90 will allow you to generate the animated GIF. So if you click on the button here, it will be assigned to generate GIF. And then if generate GIF button is clicked, the following will be performed. So it will do this. It will do clip.subclip, which will allow us to essentially specify that we want to start generating the GIF file, right? Using the selected export range from 0 second until 29 second, and then the playback speed here as we have specified in the parameters. And then we're going to use the NumPy array to essentially extract all of the frames into a NumPy array, and then we're putting it into the image list. So each frame will be placed into the image list using the append function. And then from the image list, we're going to save it out as the export.gif file. And then we specify the image format to be GIF, and we allow it to loop infinitely. Okay, and then finally, line number 110, once the generate GIF is working, let me show you, it will display a new section called download. So it is running, and when it is finished, it will display the download section. And so while we're waiting, let's have a look at the code. So it will create an export.gif file, and then we're gonna use the B64 encoder function here and then we're going to specify here in Markdown the animated GIF that we want to be able to download. And then in order to display the file size, we create the F size variable, and then we determine the file size here. And then we write out the file size using the sc.info so that we see that it is say 20 megabytes in size or so. And then we have the file name specified in this variable, f name, right? This is the download. And then you will see the preview image in just a moment. And then the button here, sc.download button, will allow you to actually download the generated GIF file, which is right here, the download image. Okay, so this st.markdown will allow you to see this image file, right? And then the export.gif here, we're going to create this st.download button, which will allow you to download the image, right? And then here on line number 126, st.info will display the file size. And so we could download here, and the file size here is 38 megabytes. So you're going to see that whenever you adjust the parameters, and if the parameter is different, you will get different file size. So before we had the playback speed to be 8, which give us a file size of 20, but when the playback speed is 5, I mean, you get more total frames, and therefore the file size jumped to 38 megabytes. Let's have a look here. When the frames per second is 8, it generated a smaller size. However, when it is at 5, it will give you almost 40 megabytes in size. So you could play around with the parameters, and the exported image will have the parameters also written out in the file name. So this will be convenient for you to see which parameters that you've actually used in generating the image here. So here we have used the scaling of 0 0.5, frames per second of 20, speed of 8, duration from 0 to 29. So this will be very convenient for you to figure out what parameters that you've used to generate the image here. So actually, if you want the file size to be smaller, you can make it a bit faster. Or you could also make the scaling to be smaller, like 0 0.4, and you'll be able to have a smaller file size. All right, and now you have the animated GIF file, which is here, and you could use it in your blog, or you could also put it into your Google slide. Let me show you. See, you could just drag and drop. You see that it's animated. 
let me show the entire right here see the Google slide that you have is animated so and so there you go you have created your very own animated GIF maker and you could use it in your blogs your presentations and let me know in the comments down below what you're using it for Thank you for watching until the end of the video. Please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing, and also turning on notifications. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.